congratulations on the season. But I want, I'm like in big sister mode when I see you because you are taken these shots with your arm dude and you're running through defenders and you're like I don't know that I want you to be recovering your own fumbles down the field throwing your body around like you do it gives me anxiety Will what is going through your mind when you're running around like this uh kind of bravely and boldly but recklessly I think we have some footage I hope maybe you don't just talk to me about your gameplay yeah I mean uh for sure it's it's definitely something that has been talked about you know ad nauseum uh, throughout the year and it, and it needs to be because you know it, your best ability is your availability and you know that's definitely cliche but it's definitely true and I, I got to be smart with how I use my body uh, at the end of the day I'm a competitor and when, when things when the game's on the line and a play needs to be made I'm not afraid to put my body uh, you know um, in a you know not great situation if that's what it takes to, to get us to continue to have an opportunity to win a game but you know I, I'm, I'm want to be this franchise quarterback for a long time and I got to protect my body. Yeah, it's like a fine balance that I think you'll learn with time. If you look back at your your season, like sort of as a whole, and I think you like you pop on the scene week seven, and I was like, oh shit! Like a four touchdown game out the gate right away, and obviously there were lots of highs and lots to build off of, which is the most exciting part. But there were some bumps in the road too. When you look, like, how would you describe your season now that you're a little removed from the craziness of it? For sure, ups and downs, um, a lot of excitement, uh, some disappointments, but overall just. A lot of learning and I, and I feel like I came out of it you know just with a lot of confidence that I you know I could do this thing and that I could play at this level um, at a high level and that I can as long as I continue to put the work in um, you know be a quarterback in this league for a long time for this team for a long time so yeah. uh, I was surrounded by a lot of great people in this organization a lot of great players and a lot of great coaches to put me in those situation or in that um, situation to succeed so I got to thank them for that um, but looking forward to taking you know the good things from from this season learning from the bad and transitioning into this next season to hopefully you know keep on that uptrend you know callahan taught you and taylor talked about him he's been given a lot of credit right for building up joe burrow um for getting him up to speed with what the nfl is uh what is have you guys talked on the phone text what's the relationship right now yeah we talked when when he first got hired and uh it's cool for him to have reached out right away and um you know express his interest in coaching me and was there for his press conference when he when he first got hired, and um, I'm just excited to to get to work for him. And I know that now we got the, the OC and and the and the staff is you know starting to um, get get finalized here. Uh, I'm I'm ready to start learning an offense. And even though it is a little difficult, you know, transitioning and, and having a new coach and, and learning a new offense, uh, it's, it, I'm not I'm not new to it, and I'm looking forward to undertaking that uh, that challenge. Yeah, I think he's going to evolve your offense, and it's going to be really nice to see. Uh, and I can't wait. I cannot wait to see what you do with it. Because um, you had a great season, and there were ups, and we got to build off of that and keep it going. You said you've learned a lot. What's the sort of walk-away lesson that you're taking into your second season? Like, what did you learn? I think, how important, I think, I think my biggest lesson that I'm taking that I don't think I necessarily did the best job of, but that I improved as the se season went on and as I got more comfortable, um, which is – my leadership role and just how important it is for you know me to be communicating and, and connecting with my teammates and my coaches uh, to make sure that everything that's on my mind and everything that I'm feeling and I'm seeing um, they understand and they know and you know sometimes that's that's not an easy conversation and as a rookie having to talk to a vet um, that could be uncomfortable so I feel like as the season went on I was able to you know grow into more of that leadership role um, but I understand just as a quarterback how important it is to uh, just be connected with those guys and to and to you know show love and know that you're only asking and telling them these things because it's in the best interest of, of them and the team and uh, sometimes it's not going to evoke the, the best response but it's the response and it's a conversation that needs to happen and uh, you know I just want to be a better leader going forward for this team. Really really well said you got to hang out at the Pro Bowl you're with Peyton Manning who I wonder if, you know, you had a better rookie season than he did. So there's a lot, lot to be excited about with you, young Will Levis. But here's you two sort of chopping it up. This must have been awesome. Let's take a look. That was one of the first things that jumped out to me was uh, how Brian would benefit Will. And uh, I've enjoyed getting to know Will and keeping up with him. And, you know, he got some good experience in his first year. But now you're looking for some continuity in the system. How amazing was that? Incredible. I mean, um, Peyton and I, you know, first first got connected, you know, as 
I had the opportunity to to go and be a counselor at his, at his camp down in Thibodeau. Uh, and then continuing that relationship uh, since then has been really, really cool. And he, he's a, obviously a Hall of Fame, one of the best quarterbacks of all time, but I think he's a Hall of Fame, one of the best individuals of all time too. And uh, to, to hear him say those those words and to show that you know he's got some some faith in me, uh, it makes me want to work even harder. I think Titan fans have a lot of faith in you. They're a great fan base you've inherited, truly. One of my favorites in the NFL. Nothing, Nobody does it like Nashville. So welcoming, so uh, beloved of their team. I'm so excited for you. We've got business to take care of. I'm hosting Battle of the Paddles, too. You are participating. Mm -hmm. You and eight table tennis loving trash talking maniacs when it comes to this thing how's your ping or how's your table tennis game it's good i'm not gonna hype myself up too much um but it, it is good i've always been a natural uh you know player with the paddle in my hands I, I will say i haven't played in a while um i don't know what the vets on our team were thinking but we actually don't have a ping pong table in the locker room so maybe that's something that has to change here in the near future but it was a staple in my college career in the locker room. Um, I was always, uh, if not top dog, right up there in the locker room. So uh, I'm looking forward to it. I'm, I'm, I'm repping Old Spice. I'm going down there for you know the second annual uh, PNG Battle for the Paddles, and uh, I'm, I'm, I'm excited. I'm excited. It, it's definitely a heated competition and and, uh, and a lot of good players. But I know that you know Old Spice and the swagger Andy Perspirant is going to keep me, you know not sweaty, even though I am a pretty sweaty individual. So I'm, I'm ready. I'm, I'm a big backhand player. I'm a big backhand player. I'm a big defensive player. Um, okay. So so we'll see. Let's not pretend this isn't like a divisional battle. Okay, it's the PG battle of the paddles too. There's eight players. There's two quarterbacks in this thing. Everybody, by the way, you can watch it on Overtime Seasons YouTube page live. It's at 8 p.m. Wednesday, the 7th. I'll be there. It'll be so much fun. But if you think I'm not going to try to like get in your head and stir some stuff up between you and Trevor Lawrence, you're out of your mind. I was going to say, yeah, if there's one person I want to beat, it's Trevor. He's, he's got, he, he's 1-0 <laughs> against me. So uh, I, I got to make even the playing field, at least on the, even the, uh, the table, I guess. What advantage do you have over Trevor Lawrence in this? Well, I don't know what kind of ping pong player he is, but I don't have hair that's going to get in my face when we're playing. So that'll be, that'll be an advantage, I think. <laughs> I'll, steal it, I'll steal his headband. And I'll convince PNG that for head and shoulders, it'd be good to have his hair all over the place and show Ooh. off that mane. And then Maybe you're going to fans in. Yeah, bring some fans yeah, on the side that we can go I'll around. Put like, some, yeah. I'll put him behind him, like the opposite Beyonce. And so all his hair will fly into his face. And then we've got a real situation here with PNG Battle of the Paddles on Overtime Season's YouTube page, guys. It's amazing. It happened last year. Trent, Ta by the way, Trent Taylor won this thing. He's back. That's your real competition. Okay. I'm a little scared uh, of him. Yeah. yeah. Jamal Williams, get, just get your stuff together. Get your stuff together and get your ass to Vegas, Will. We appreciate you. Congrats on an incredible rookie campaign, and we cannot wait to see what's coming up. Actually, why don't we say hi? You, you want a Super Bowl some days. Andrew Whitworth around. Andrew, want to say hi to Will Levis?